All right, what's up, everyone? It's Giant Jigglypuff Up Three here. Uh, this is gonna be a Junk Queen versus Zarya matchup guide, but this is gonna be different from my other guides. My other guides were basically I'm in the training mode and I go over a huge explanation, whereas this time I have notes that I've written in a notepad, um, and I'm gonna be going between that, uh, the fandom page which has like a bunch of the information of like the stats and stuff, as well as in here. So. For this guide, I'm actually going to start off by um, going to um, the fandom page. Because in order to, for us to fully understand the matchup, we have to understand Zarya, right? And the in-game doesn't show us enough detail of what th things do what. So let's go ahead and go over them. So first and foremost, she has a passive ability called Energy. Basically, um, she produces two shields. And with these shields, if the enemies were to shoot these shields, for every 5 damage that the shield takes, you get about 1% uh, uh, of energy. Now, technically, if you take 1 bit of damage, then it translates to a little bit, but we're not going to go over that. Uh, if you want to read the fandom, go for it, go nuts. Long story short, the shields have uh, 200 health each, and so if you were to break these shields of 200 health, um, you would end up giving 40% charge to Zarya. And for each energy that she has on her, like the percentage, um, the more damage she does, and I'll go over those numbers as well later. Um, there are like a few things, like Resurrect means that she has 0% uh, energy upon revival. We're not going to get into that. This isn't about just Zarya as a whole. This is about the matchup. So just keep in mind that these bubbles... Uh, will increase her damage the more uh, uh, damage her barriers take. So, going on to the next one, um, this is her primary fire, this is her left click, it's the beam portion. Uh, I want you guys to keep in mind that this has a range of 15 meters, starts off at 85 per second, and goes to 170 per second with 100 charge. Um, and you can actually see these stats on the bottom of the reload time as well. And that it is a rate of 20 rounds per second with an ammo of 100. So it takes 5 seconds for her to run out of ammo. This is actually important for later. Um, this headshot is important, but for what I'm going to analyze, uh, it's irrelevant. So just keep that in mind. Um, for her secondary fire, um, it is a uh, projectile. It's an area of effect. It's technically weaker if you're hitting a single target, but if it's hitting multiple targets, it adds up because it's AoE, because of that uh, splash damage. Um, so, uh, for this one, it's 25 rounds per shot and 800, um, and it's one shot per second, so you can shoot this for about 4 seconds. Uh, I will probably not go over this like, at all for this matchup, because this is more of a one-on-one -on -one matchup situation kind of thing. Um, I will be going over the beam portion. Um, but there are some values if you want that as well. Because I just hear Junk Queen go, eh. Alright, whatever. I don't know if you guys even hear that. Now here's the big chungy wungy of Zarya. This is the whole matchup, to be honest. Is Particle Barrier. So, um, there's also a Projected Barrier, but we're going to go over Particle Barrier a lot more. Um, so this thing has 200 health. So does this one. This thing has a 10 second cooldown. This one has an 8 second cooldown. Um, and uh, she does things like cleanse herself. And if you shoot it, she gets that energy that we were talking about earlier. Um, now, the most important part of this is this 10 second cooldown and the 200 health. Um, and the 2 seconds part. Everything else um, with the idea of status effects and stuff. Pretty important, but... Uh, not as important as those three right there, because that's where a lot of the math comes in. Um, uh, Protective Barrier is basically the same thing, but with a shorter cooldown. Um, but uh, we'll keep in mind um, that this is a thing, but uh, you'll see later that I don't really include it in like the numbers and stats. As far as her uh, ult, it's basically a hard CC. You can't even like uh, more fade out of it. Um, there are some ways to get around it, and I'll talk about those later. Um, but, uh, as a queen alone, you have no way of getting out of this. Um, it's gonna last for, um, uh, where is it? Duration 3.5 seconds. Um, and it is a projectile kind of sort of, so she doesn't have to be next to you or anything. 
Um, and it grabs multiple people. So, um, I think if I go over my notes, that, yeah, that covers about everything I wanted to cover for there. Um, so, let's actually go into the training mode. I'm actually going to go back to um, comp game. Um, and let's go to Zarya. Now, let's say uh, we are not considering the right click. Because the right click has what I consider to be just about infinite range, right? It goes up and it, it won't disappear until it lands or hits someone, right? This bot is what I'm considering. So, Zarya has a 15 meter range. If I go to the 15 meter point and just a little bit more, actually, you'll see that I shouldn't be hitting him. But if I walk forward just so slightly, I am now hitting him. And this is in between. So, uh, typically, if you see a Zarya, you want to be one of two places. Um, you either want to be at this like 16 ish meter point where she can't hit you, or um, in order to threaten her, you can be about the 5 meter. You don't have to be exactly 5 meters. You can be 7. You can be uh, 3. Doesn't matter. Um, her damage is consistent throughout the entire beam. It doesn't like um, scale down or anything. Um, so if you are right here, um, you can threaten with the Carnage Swing. Um, you can probably land a lot more of your shots. Like, let me go ahead and change to um, uh, Junk Queen real quick. Ignore that. I am not a Zarya main. Let's go to Jungle Queen. My throne is where I found it. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and go over here where we can actually make a Zarya bot because we can actually see the um, uh, the size of her in comparison. So, going here, gonna go Zarya. So, if you stand, what is this like? This is about five meters maybe, but if you stand right here, um, I do have her reticle. To be about the size of the spread. Oh, I can't really see it. But if I go like this. It like barely gets her. Um, and this will fully land on her. Um, now. Uh, you also have a projectile. In um, Gracie. But keep in mind that she is a tank. So if you pull her. She doesn't go as far as uh, most other um, characters would. Um. Yeah, and when you're at the, around the 5 meters, if you stand like right about here and you go Carnage, you will get her. Um, it is within your distance. Um, keep in mind that you can also get a headshot. She can't, so I think I mentioned that earlier. Uh, so if you're around this like 5 meter range, um, look at how much headshot I'm getting. And your 80 um, damage uh, per shot becomes 160 per shot. If you land it all... You probably won't. There probably like, will be like a few that like go in and out. Plus, like the the strafing stuff. If you just hit the body, it's eighty. Just go like a slightly above, and this should do a combination of body shot plus headshot. All right. Um. Let's go to the next section. So, uh, the stats. Um. Unfortunately, I'm in a custom. I'm uh, not a custom game. I'm in a uh, practice range where if you're not in a roll queue uh, situation setup, um, it will basically act as if you are in um, open queue or whatever or arcade where you have like the less health. So let's actually leave this real quick. And I think I have a custom code. Uh, presets. Drunker Queen testing. I just got to make sure to not accidentally hit. A specific combination of buttons, or else I uh, actually let me let me just make sure I can still do it. If I go to Junk Queen right now, if I do, there we go. Okay, cool. I can still do that. Um, so you'll notice that I have four hundred and fifty health, and if I switch to Zarya, or if I pull out Zarya, um, Zarya has um a combination of four hundred and seventy-five health. So. Uh, by default, Zarya has more health than you. You can, however, give yourself overshield by shouting, which will give you 150 and put you at 600. Um, however, Zarya has the advantage here because she's got two bubbles that she can put on herself for 200 each. Um, so keep this in mind. So, uh, Junk Queen does um, uh, 106 damage per second. This is not the same as damage per shot. Um, each shot does 80 damage, but if I just hold it, you shoot faster than a second. So therefore you do over, um, you know, your damage per shot. Um, and with reload, you do 85 damage per second. Um, 
you'll notice that it takes six body shots to kill Zarya, which is it equates to 4.5 seconds without bubbles. So, two, three, four, five, six. You'll have two extra shots, um, and I will get to why those two extra shots are important later. Uh, but uh, if you accidentally shoot a Zarya bubble, you shouldn't need to reload in order to kill her. Just don't keep shooting the bubble. Um, or do. Uh, I'll explain that later too. Now, for Zarya, um, let me actually go to switch to Zarya right now, real quick. We will drop them. And let me just make this Junker Queen. So, um, Zarya is a little complicated. And I will pull up my notes in a second. But basically, um, you'll notice that I'm at uh, zero uh, energy. And um, I my, my beam is piss small. Let me actually go over here. I kind of wish they would shoot faster. Actually, hold up. There might be a faster way to shoot me. Let's see if this works. Oh, geez. The walk to... How do I get there real fast? For anyone who doesn't understand what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go to a uh, a sniper bot. This guy over there, um, which will shoot me. I think it's for more damage. All right, that one honestly wasn't too much, but you'll notice that my beam is slightly bigger now. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to show the hundred damage because that that's going to take forever. To be honest. Um, so, ignore that. Um, let's just go over the numbers right now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull up um, the uh, calculations. So, for Zarya, um, the reload time is 1.5. Uh, and the particle beam can shoot for uh, six uh, sec uh, well, five seconds before you need to reload. Um, and the, here are a bunch of calculations. So, I obviously included 0. I obviously included 100. These other ones might seem random, but they're not. So, this is the percentage uh, Zarya will be at if you accidentally shoot her bubble one time with Scattergun. Um, I don't have the number for um, uh, Carnage, but you'll, 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 you'll see that it's not that important later. Um, so, uh... You put her at 16%. Um, at 25%, uh, uh, Zarya is doing the same damage as Junker Queen's Scattergun. Um, at 40%, which is uh, if your your team breaks her one of her bubbles, or like fully charges one of her bubbles, um, she does 119 damage per second. At 80%, which is damages two bubbles, it is 153 damage per second. And we already know that the 100 is uh, 170. Now, if you were to just take a Zarya standing still, shooting a Junker Queen, not decaying, um, which uh, her energy eventually decays after a while, um, you'll notice that I actually put at what point um, uh, Zarya has to reload with and without shout. Um, so one of the important ones is... Uh, if you see uh, that, uh, so uh, for the one shatter gun shot, um, if you shoot her once, it actually makes it that she can kill you, assuming that the energy doesn't go down, um, before she has to reload. You would have to shout for this, so be careful. Um, uh, at 25% uh, as well, um, you can also shout to try to save yourself a little bit. Um, at 40% though, so if you were to break the bubble, she technically does not kill you before a reload unless she melees you. Which, if she's close enough to you and she just punches you, that's enough to kill you. I know that this looks a little weird. Um, I did some rounding stuff, but it's a little more than 5 seconds. Um, uh, 80% and 100%, which is uh, high energy. Um, technically, I think uh, anything above 50 is considered high energy, according to the cards in Overwatch 1. Shoutouts if you're an Overwatch 1 player. Um, but anything above 50 is considered high energy. At that point, you uh, are going to have a bad time. Notice how the fastest she can kill you without shout is 2.6 seconds. Um, and that's just her shooting you. If her teammates are shooting you, 
uh, you will be melted. In fact, if you are at 80%, if you break both of her bubbles, you will be melted. So, um, I'll get to her bubbles in, in a bit, um, but I felt like this was a necessary, um, thing I needed to show. So, let's go ahead and go to cooldowns to track. So, um, um this is the part where I'm basically just gonna Spilo, um, give you a thing to look at instead of a fancy, um, gameplay footage to look at. I'm sorry about that. Um... If I had more gameplay footage, I would post it here, but I don't. Sorry. Um, but she's got two bubbles you need to track, and then the other thing you need to track is her ult. Her ult's pretty easy. Um, it hard counters your ult. Uh, legit, you can't do anything about this. This is a teammate thing. I'll get to the teammates in a bit. Um, but let's go ahead and go to... Um, is this ult uh, considered worth... A con you know, consider do you to even track their bubbles? Uh, yes. And although like this, this sounds like a stupid section. I will probably have the section for other matchups, um, like you know May or whatever. And sometimes the uh cooldowns don't matter. So, uh, but the bubbles are definitely worth it, as you saw before with the energy. Um, it charges her up and it also removes status, which in your case is wound. And uh, if you ult, it removes your purple. Um, so uh, you don't want to just waste a rampage on that. So, best case scenario is um, she bubbles once, she bubbles twice uh, on herself, by the way, not on an, uh, a teammate. This would be a different number. And uh, Zarya has eight seconds of uh, vulnerability. Basically, so if one bubble has a cooldown of 10 seconds and she uses two of those seconds to use her second bubble, those eight seconds she does not have a bubble. Um, which, uh, going back to the numbers up here, if it takes 4.5 seconds to shoot Azaria without bubbles, she is dead. Um, so keep this in mind. If she spaces, even if she spaces out like a little bit, right? Let's say that um, she uh, bubbles, waits two seconds, so it's eight seconds on cooldown, and then uses the bubble again. And now it's six seconds. You have a, like uh, 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 a four point. You only need to kill. You have six seconds to kill her, and it only takes 4.5 to kill her, uh, assuming she doesn't get healed. Um, but also, assuming your teammates are shooting, you should be fine. Um, so, baiting out her bubbles is super important, um, keeping track of those. Um, how do you bait her bubbles out? Shoot her, duh. Um, but also, uh, in another practical way, uh, landing Gracie. So, um, you might be like, well, you know, can't she just bubble Gracie? Sure, right? Well, what if she doesn't bubble Gracie, right? You pull her in. And now she's in a bad spot where her, your team can do more damage at different angles because they're closer, right? Like, let me go ahead and explain this concept in game. Um, I don't need to switch it to uh to that, right? I just gotta do this. So, let's say uh this is Zarya, and I have a teammate standing here, right? So, um, you know she can she can still see me. She can still probably see this person over here, um, but if you pull her forward, all of a sudden, she can't see all of us. This person now has a better vantage point. So does this person over here, um, and you guys can all get, like, headshots if you're playing with a close-range person, even better. Um, but the point is, um, landing Gracie to put her in bad positions is part of the matchup. So let's go ahead and go back to my notes. Um, so the ideal situation is, you pull her in, you shoot once if you can, um, and then uh, Zarya should bubble. Um, the, the, I know she has shield health, but shield health does not um, carry over for... Um, I'm sorry, I'm doing that so that you hear less noises. Or I hear less noises. Um, the shield health should not re like, you know, regenerate until 3 seconds after not taking damage. And there's only one scenario where she shouldn't be taking damage, and that's double bubbling, which then... She could be at full health and it doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I'm not even going to consider her shield health, by the way. Um, so, let's say she does bubble. What do you do? Um, you can either wait those two seconds out, or you can wait one second in Carnage. So, like, let me go ahead and back into the game. If, um, I don't, I don't, ha I wish I had a second person to help me show this off, but, um, if she bubbles, go one Mississippi. One, and then bam. And her bubble will end by the time your carnage comes out. Um, 
Now that's important for two reasons. One, actually, I can just do this to do that. Um, one reason it's important is because you are getting damage off on her. Um, but the second one is um, you're getting the wound healing back. Um, so she can either choose to negate your healing, which honestly isn't that much. She shouldn't be trying to negate wound. But the damage part, I understand her trying to negate. Um, so uh, use you don't try to uh, you know break her bubble with carnage. Try to use carnage as either a bait or like a after the bubble thing. Should you solo break the shield? No. Don't. Don't even think about it. Don't don't even just, just look away. Unless you are mega damage boosted by a Baptiste, Amp Matrix, Mercy, and like what else boosts you? Nano boost? I don't don't do it. Cause this is the unboosted stats, right? Your scatter gun gun does eight damage, uh, which gives her sixteen energy. You can shoot one point uh, every one point three three seconds, and so she's going to bubble. You shoot her. It's gonna wait one point three three seconds. Shoot one point three three seconds, and the bubble ends. You have shot her twice before the bubble ends, right? Because like part way through this guy, um, is when the bubble ends. So you did one hundred sixty damage which is less than the health of a bubble, and you didn't even break it. You end up just giving her 32 damage, which if I go back up to here, oh, anything over 25 makes her do more damage than you. So don't do that. Should your team break the shield? Only if you can. Um, now, I'm going to show you the calculations for one bubble and two bubbles. And I will tell you why you shouldn't shoot her if she still has two bubbles. Um, so if you have, uh, if she has one bubble, um, we're going to go back to that math, right? You're doing 160 damage to this thing. So all you need is someone to do 40 damage over two seconds. Anyone can do that. I'm pretty sure Mercy can do that. I, I'm not going to look it up. Someone can prove me wrong. I don't care. That's not a lot of damage, right? You can break a single singular bubble. And if we go back to the numbers over here, breaking one bubble does put her at um enough uh, more damage than you. But if she only has one bubble left and she's vulnerable, and your team decides to uh, uh, uh you you decide to attack her, your team, um uh, if she's alone, she can't kill you. As long as you you know don't give her the space to melee you, of course. Um, but assuming you have someone who can even slightly heal you, she can't kill you. It is at a little danger point, but um, it if it's her last bubble, it is worth it. But this needs to be a team effort. If it's just you, not worth it. If it's you and a mercy, it's not worth it. Um, but if it's like you and a soldier seventy six, maybe. Honestly, maybe. Um, in fact, if soldier seventy six uses his healing and heals you, I think you win that matchup. <laughs> Ironically, um, so now let's say they have uh, Zarya has two bubbles, right? Um, the math technically says you can do four shots, but that's not realistic, um, because you're probably gonna have like a little bit of gap in between, um, like her actually putting up the bubble and shooting. So let's go ahead and say it's three shots. Um, I do have the math for four shots, which. Um, you might think ends up being like, um, you know, if she had one bubble, it is not. Um, but if she has uh, three shots, then your team needs to do uh, uh, 160 damage over those four seconds. Now, uh, 160 damage over those four seconds is very doable. However, she will be at 80 energy, which if I go back to here, she will melt you even if you use shout melt you like like carnage's um uh cooldown which is like, like typically about like you know it, go, it can go down to like six seconds four seconds whatever if even if it's four seconds she kills you faster with a shout then it, you can get carnage again <laughs> so um keep that in mind uh 80 damage is scary um 
even if you get those four shots in, right, it's 80 damage over four seconds, which is, like, the same mathematically as, um, the one bubble. However, um, she probably won't just do two bubbles in a row. It'll probably be one bubble, her team's healing her. Uh, she lets you take, uh, you know, take a little bit more of her health. She bubbles again, um, her team heals her again. Or maybe even, like, a Suzu. Or maybe, um, their Ana puts someone to sleep on your team and you don't get the damage out. Two bubbles is not worth it. Just trust. Alright. What do you do when you're when she's out of bubbles? Um, Scattergun is your highest damage per second. Um, it's what I recommend. If you can get uh, mostly body shots and a little bit of headshot in there, that should use all of your pellets. If you are, for some reason, making out with a Zarya, and you can put it in her head, sure. Uh, I don't know why that would be a thing, but uh, Scattergun is your only item weapon whatever you know like your only tool to um get headshots um so um it is your highest damage per second um keep that in mind um you can also rampage now why is rampage nicer over uh scattergun it is easier to kill a target that cannot heal than it is to just you know dump a load into the uh zarya uh plus if you have your ult you're not grinding your ult again, right? Like, you have to use your ult before you can get another one. Um, so, you might as well rampage. Uh, would I say solo target her? Honestly, possibly. Because let's go back to that piece of information that I said wasn't useful earlier. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I'm going back to this, but... If she dies and she gets rezzed, she gets rezzed with zero energy. So all of that you know, charge or whatever, um, does not come back. It's just gone. Um, now, I put a little star here. Um, I don't recommend Carnage. Um, Carnage has, like, a one-second wind-up time in order for you to, uh, um, in order for you to, uh, you know, actually swing it. And then it's 90 plus, uh, what, 45 over, like, 3 seconds or something like that. Um, so, if you can time this right after her bubble, great. But if she's just, like, out in the open with no bubble, eh. You know, like, you could shout and run to her, but then you don't have to shout. Because, like, you know, um, unless, like, you're being shot at already. Um, but uh, shout's probably going to be its own video. Just use shout more to escape um, and, like... Uh, you know, get healed during that, then just use it to engage. Unless you feel like you can get, actually get a kill, but um, for the most part, I don't recommend using Carnage. Um, I will get to Graviton Surge later. Um, let's go ahead and go to Teammates to Help You versus Zarya. So, um, there are multiple ways to deal with a Zarya, uh, and I'm not going to talk about Zarya's counter picks necessarily, because um, um, I could say, you know, switch to Winston. That's that's a counter pick. That's not what this video is about, right? This video is about Junk Queen versus Zarya. Um, and although I will mention ways to counter Zarya, this is more for teammates rather than um you yourself, if that makes sense. So, um, having a high damage hero such as like Bastion, um, and I'm only giving one example. I'm not gonna list the whole plot. You could be like, oh, Reaper does a lot of damage. Close up. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Moving on. Um, if you have high damage output after the, okay, so I don't, I, I'm not talking, Bastion mains out there. <laughs> Hear me out. Do not shoot the first bubble, but mow down the second bubble. It is okay to shoot the second bubble as long, okay. And also I would even wait to be in turd form for that second bubble. Like just poke her a little bit. She does one bubble. Second, uh, before, you know, even, possibly even before her second bubble, or if you want to, like, when she second bubbles, um, go into turret mode, try to mow her down. Hopefully, Junker Queen's pulled her with Gracie so that she's out of position, um, and just mow her down. Um, that is probably the easiest way to kill Zarya, um, while playing as Junker Queen. Now, um, some more mind gamey version of it is to threaten her with, uh, negative statuses. Um, such as, like, Ana or Ash. Um, so, like, if Ash throws a dynamite, um, she can't 
bubble everyone on her team. Um, and in fact, most Zarya's, at least at my rank and below, are selfish. They will bubble themselves. <laughs> um, which, by the way, if anyone's wondering, I am plat. Um, so uh, I'm not like top masters, grandmasters, or whatever. So take what take take this mind game version with a grain of salt. Um, so uh, you know, force her to use bubble. Don't just purple her at full health. It really shouldn't work at full health. Maybe if they're like bronze and then they're like, oh, I'm purpled. I need to, for some reason, get rid of it. They will bubble themselves. But a little higher in the ranks, they'll be like, okay, no, I, I need to be at a risk of dying first in order to bubble. Um, now, this is a more practical one. Um, and this is just a Zarya counter. But because you have no other choice, this is a, this is the only solution. To escape her Graviton Surge, you either need to Suzu or uh, pull, get pulled from Life Weaver or um, get raised up by a Life Weaver's Petal. Um, and this just flat out cancels her ult um, if you can get out of there in time. Um, you aren't D.Va. You cannot eat it. You are not Orisa. You cannot... Um, I think Orisa can even Javelin spin it, can't she? But, like, she can also just fortify and get out of there. Um, you are not them. You are not that guy. <laughs> um, basically. Um, so, uh, having these two as your supports is pretty good. Um, which is why I'm, like, still, like, you know, iffy on this mind game portion of it. Um, uh, but the last one I want to mention is just flat out a character, May. She is sometimes known as a tank buster, but in this situation, it she's more of a no escape kind of uh uh character where if you um slow Zarya, she will have to bubble herself in order to like get out of there and like cleanse her freeze, which is like what we we're talking about earlier of like threatening with negative statuses. But then if she tries to escape with a bubble, like as she uses the bubble. Um, you can prevent healing and also her escape by um, uh, putting up a wall. Um, now, you'll notice that this list does not have something like uh, like like another section for like Reaper or something like that, right? Um, I, I want to say as a Junker Queen main, you should probably realize that you are better with uh, characters that play close up with you as a team rather than like Ash, who's a sniper, which is why I don't have Ash as, like, here, or whatever, right? You might be like, oh, but Ana can be long range. Ana can be whatever the hell she wants. Listen, Ana's fucking cracked. Um, <laughs> and you can even say stuff like, um, you know, Baptiste can do a lot of damage. Uh, sure. Yeah. I I'm not denying that. Um, Baptiste can definitely do a lot of damage. Especially if he uses his ult. Um, but these are just some examples of, like, Let's think of these instances rather than a oh let's just counter Zarya you know, um so these are potential teammates you can have um I honestly can't think of anything else I want to add to this video um so let me know what you guys think of this format um if you want more gameplay footage or like an analysis of like a game I can try but I don't decide who my enemies are you know my my opponents are in a you know, maybe in like quick play, I could be like, yo, do me a favor, I need to record a video. But um, other than that, I don't really have, you know, people to do this with. Um, hopefully, this helps someone out. And uh, yeah, it's already like a 30 minute long video. Um, until next time, guys. Uh, I, you know what? Actually, request the next character you want in the comments. Uh, I'm not usually like a like, comment, and subscribe person, but like, this is all supposed to be educational and. If it does help someone out, I do want to know what a video they would like to see next. So until next time, peace, guys.